Good morning, church. It is indeed lovely to see so many faces back at church. It's been a long time since we've been locked out of church. Not just here at Wilton, but all over. But God is wonderful indeed. God is good. For all the years that, for all the, all the two years nearly that we've been out of church, God has created new opportunities for us. And though we have not been meeting together, we have certainly been widening and strengthening our families worldwide. This morning, I have a message for you. The message is entitled, Signs of the Time. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, O oh God, and our Creator. Father God, I come before you, humble, as I offer myself unto you, God, to do the thing that you've asked me to do. May the Holy Spirit take control of us right now, O God, binding us together, so that your word may be received gladly by all who is in this sanctuary, O God. Father, be with us and lead us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. Beloved, as I said before this morning, my message is entitled, Signs of the Times. And I just want to remind you all that Jesus is coming again. He is coming again, and he's truly coming again. All those who have ears to hear will hear, and those who have eyes to see will see. In fact, it is so clear that even the blind will see and the deaf will hear. Brethren, as I speak these words, I'm reminded of a very special song, the one we've just heard. Oh, if only I could sing. I will sing it to you. But as I look around the church and see our lovely new windows, believe me, I wouldn't want to break one of them with my voice. I would repeat a few lines, however. It says, <clears throat> it says, lift up the trumpet and lo, let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, ye pilgrims, be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again. He's truly coming again, beloved. It is a promise, and every word promised by the, God, by the mighty Father will come to pass. How fortunate we are that God has given us the signs so that we in this time should know the days in which we are living, so that we can make ourselves ready to receive our Lord when he returns. These words are so profound and true. We have no doubt and no reason to doubt because we know that every word spoken by the Father will certainly come to pass. And every promise given unto us, believe me, it will manifest. As the Bible remains our guide, our only guide, so every word written in scriptures will be fulfilled. Take a good look, look around. See the things that is happening around us. What do we see? Trials and tribulations. Sickness, disease, earthquake and famine, pestilence. All the things that the Lord has told us will happen in these last days. Beloved, let us not be caught sleeping. Let us not be like the Jews in the days of, Je of Jeremiah, who, having been warned by the prophet Jeremiah, sent to them by the Most High God, chose to walk away from God, only to be condemned and taken into captivity. We have a better opportunity, for we know the history of Israel. We have the experience of Israel to learn from, so none of us can claim innocence in this time. We have only one obligation, 
that is to serve the Lord and do as he requires of us. Let us not repeat the mistakes of, the, of past generations, like in the days of Noah. For as Noah listened to the call of the Father and started to build the ark, many around him would have laughed, wondering, what is this madman doing? Rain? What is called rain? But Noah listened. And when the rain started falling, many cling to the ark, but it was too late, for they did not listen to the call. They did not hear the words of Noah. They did not choose to obey God's command. Let us not be like those, my beloved. Beloved, all these things that are happening in this time is for our edification because of God's love for mankind so that we should not suffer the same faith as those who have gone before. And so, as our Lord Jesus Christ walked this earth, he preached and he taught of the things which will come to pass in the days before his second coming. So when we see these things being revealed unto us in this time, in the last days, these days of probation, let us not be astonished. Let us not be frightened. But let us cling to the garment of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we hear of wars and rumors of wars, when we witness pestilence and disease in, the, in these days, in these dark days of COVID-19, seeing families and friends alike perish before our very eyes whilst we're helpless to help. Earthquakes, volcanoes in diverse places, flooding and famines affecting every part of the world. In America, there are floods in one part and there's fire in another part. In Europe, there's fires and there's floods. In the Caribbean, there's earthquakes, there's hurricanes. In Asia, the same. Every corner of the world, not one part is untouched. Not one part is untouched, beloved. When we see disrespectful children having no love for their parents, knife crime, gun violence, have no, having no tolerance with each other anymore, having no knowledge of the love of God or man. Oh, Father God, have mercy. What a terrible time in which we are living right now. Yet you have told us that when we see these things, it is just the beginning of sorrow. There's still much worse to come. Beloved, let us cling to the garment of God. Let us not forsake the Lord in this time. I had a friend. We grew up together. We roamed the streets together. We did many bad things together. And then I tried to bring him into the church. And he fell sick. He didn't know the time, but he had cancer. And while I tried to speak to him, he did not want to hear. He did not want to listen. A few weeks later, he died. I had yet another friend who was in the church, who while I was roaming and having fun, he tried to bring me into the church, and I didn't want to know. And then I went away to the Caribbean to work and came back. And when I met him in a funeral for the first time after many years, I was astonished to know he no longer was in the church. And when I spoke to him of the Sabbath, the same thing he tried to teach me when I was younger, he did not want to know. He had walked away from it. Little did he know, only a few weeks later, he passed away also. None of us know the day or the hour. How unfortunate I thought that a man should give all his youth to serving God. And at a time, the very time when he should be drawn closer to God because he's coming to the end of his days, he walked away from God. So sad. What a sad ending. 
Do we want to be like that man? I certainly don't. For his experience to drive me even closer to serve the Lord and to be drawn closer to God in this time. How long, my Father, how long will we suffer these things? Guide us and protect us so that we will not be found sleeping. Help us to be mindful of these days. Bring us to repentance so that we should be ready and waiting in perfect state to meet you in the clouds, dear Father. Beloved, although some, although to some, it may seem to be all doom and gloom, I am here to remind you this morning that we have hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. We have hope. We have promise. We have a promise of life everlasting. He has told us he will never leave us or forsake us. He's always with us. As we started this morning, I focus on the love of God. How fortunate we are that we have such a loving God. That even in our sinful state, he cares and loves us. Even when we choose to walk away from him, he continues to wheel us back to him. What a loving God we serve. Can we love God as much? No, but by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we could be guided towards loving him so that we can inherit a glorious promise. Fortunate we are that we have such a mighty Savior who have reminded us in this reminded us of these times for in Matthew 24, as was read earlier, as Jesus sat at the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell me, when will these things be? And what will be the signs of your coming and the end of the ages? And Jesus answered them saying, and I'm reading from verse 4. He said, take heed that no man deceive you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And as I read those verses, I remember I was working in Grenada, I was program director for Grenada Broadcasting Network. And the prime minister, he always uses God when he wants to win an election. And so he bought what he called a prophet from America. And this prophet came to the stadium. And the stadium was filled to capacity. The only time I've seen so much people in the, in the stadium was during carnival and on Independence Day. And this prophet came to the stadium, and when he entered, he was driving. He came in in a more expensive limousine than the Prime Minister of Grenada. He had several bodyguards all around him, and the Prime Minister gave them the authority to carry guns with them. And he preached. And he touched people, and he, healed. he said he was healing them. And there was one young man who came from the audience. And when he touched him, he would not fall. And he touched him again, he would not fall. And his bodyguards came in and moved him off. A few weeks later, he went back to America, and the news came true. He was arrested for child molesting and other crimes. False prophets. We see them all the time. We turn on our television, and we see them. They're preaching in churches at bigger stadiums. They're asking men to pay so that they can pray for them. They're driving around in big limousines and flying around in helicopters and private jets with bodyguards all around them. God wants humble people to serve him. God calling is not that we should be sure of with all the jewelry and all the Negligee. He wants us to be humble. 
to listen to his calling. Beloved, it says, for nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And there'll be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. <clears throat> and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures shall be saved. Beloved, the key words here are he who endures to the end shall be saved. Let us not walk away from God, for God will never walk away from us. Let us not fall by the wayside just when we should be running to our Father. During this pandemic, we have lost many loved ones. We have seen many of our church families go down. But what does that do? Does that mean we curse God? Does that mean we lose faith? No, we must be drawn closer to God. We are people of faith. We believe in the promise. And we know that even those who sleep will rise to a better tomorrow. And when a man sleeps, he might sleep for a thousand years. But when he awakes, it is only tomorrow. For when we sleep, we know but one night. And when tomorrow comes, it's just another day. You see, we serve a loving and forgiving God. A God who does not desire that any one of us should be lost. So he has given us a time, a time of probation, and he has alerted us to the time of his coming so that we, so that all who believe by faith should be rescued from sin. This is the times that we're living in now. A time that we must repent. A time that we must be drawn even closer to God. Therefore, family in Christ, Jesus, do not, in Christ Jesus, do not be despair. In all things, let us give thanks to our Father, doing all that he requires of us. And one of the most important tasks he has entrusted us with in this time is that we should spread the word of his second coming throughout the world. He has asked us to go to every corner, shout it from the housetop, in our workplaces, on the buses, as we are shopping, in every way people would listen to us. Let us spread the word of his second coming. Some will curse us, some will walk away from us. But God does not want us to save everyone. Just sow the seed, and when the seed is planted, the Holy Spirit will do the rest. In Matthew 24, verse 14, we are reminded that the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then will the end come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel, the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Family, these are most certainly the last days we are witnessing. All the signs of the times. Though foolish men may laugh at us, mock us, or try to deceive us, telling us that we are confused, and I've heard it many times. I've spoken to many of my virgins. God, I hope he bring them to him. My virgins who I used to drink and smoke with, when I talk to them now, they laugh at me. They say to me, they say to me, you have lost it. If I have lost it, I've lost it in a good way. For I have found my creator. I have found my God. I have found my savior. And the things I did, I no longer do. And I will try to bring them to the same place that I am. But only the Spirit can lead them there. Amen. 
For we have a promise, a promise sealed in the love of God. Do not be disturbed by any of these utterings, for the wise shall seek knowledge. Knowledge shall bring wisdom. And so, wise and so, while foolish men live to die, the wise will live to live, for we live to inherit life. We live to inherit God's promise. For God desired that none of us should die. He desired that not one of us should die. And even as men failed him and walked away from him, he still held up the promise of life. What a wonderful God we serve. I say to my friends, when they laugh at me, I say to them, if I am wrong, I have nothing to lose, but I have lived a good life. And if I am right, I shall live to see that glorious morning when our Lord comes through the cloud. So I still have nothing to lose and all to gain. Let it be that way with us all. For we have a promise sealed in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The same is he who was rejected by the Jews at his first coming. He came unto them, but they knew him not. Yet, despite their rejection and the, sinful, and the sinful nature of man, he still chose to give his life, so that by his blood all may be drawn unto the promise of his Father. Can you imagine such love? Can any of us boast such love? Although men of old prophesy of his coming, how fortunate we are in this time to have heard of his second coming pronounced from his very own mouth. Yes, we heard it from our Lord himself, so that no one can be in any doubt that he will return. For he left this earth, giving us a promise. He said, I've gone to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare that place for you, I shall return to take you unto myself. What a wonderful promise. A glorious promise indeed. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, says the Lord. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare that place for you, I shall come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also, and where I go, you know the way. What a glorious promise indeed we have in Christ Jesus, a promise to which we are fully assured. We should have no doubt. Beloved, When we look at the world and the state is in, this week, as I drove around, burning out the last of my petrol to find more petrol, and my car almost ran dry and I could not find none. This is the first world, as I call it. This is not the third world. As we went to the shops and the shelves were empty, I looked around, and people were panicking. And I remember I was in Grenada during Hurricane Ivan, the first Category 4 hurricane ever to hit the, that hemisphere. And when I woke up the morning after Hurricane Ivan, every rooftop was on the ground. Every tree was on the ground. The roads were blocked, and I wondered, how will we survive? But God had already made a way for us. And I realized this week that in the Caribbean and Africa, where we have very little, we're much more fortunate. Because after the weeks that followed after the hurricane, people gathered together. We cooked on wood. The community came together. We cooked together. We reasoned together. We prayed together. And when we cooked, it was not just for our family, it was for the whole community. The rivers were filled, and people made the best of what they had. 
And within a few months, the vegetation grew back. And where people thought it would be years before the island would return, in a little while, the roofs were back on and people were giving thanks and praise. Here in the first world, when a little disaster come, we panic, we lose faith. We start to hold everything in. We create shortages because we are afraid. Where is our faith? Our faith is lacking, beloved. Our faith is lacking. As we, uh, <clears throat> beloved, in, in, as we come in near to the close this morning, because I do not want to stay long, let us, let me further reassure you that Jesus is truly coming again. As we continue to read the full gospel of Jesus Christ, in Mark 13, Jesus, in Mark 13, it is reaffirmed to us again as Jesus reminds us of the things which must come to pass as we're nearing his second coming. For as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, John, James, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the signs of the times? And again, Jesus repeated, just so that we could have no doubt. And Jesus answered them by saying, take heed that no man, no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled, for such things must happen, but the end is not yet. I've said it all before, but I'm repeating it again, so that no one can have any doubt. Nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms, and there will be earthquakes in various places. And there will be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrow. But watch out for yourself, for they shall deliver you up to counsel, and you will be beaten in the synagogue. Now, if we cannot cope with what's happening right now, what will happen when our children turn on us? When our family condemn us? When they give us up because we serve the Lord and we have been victimized and to save themselves in a sinful world, they will give up their parents and their brothers and their sisters. How will we cope then? But what? <laughs> You'll be brought forth before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them. But the gospel must first be preached in all, to all nations. When they arrest you and deliver you up, do not worry beforehand or, or premeditate what you will speak. But whatever is given to you in that hour, speak that, for it is not you who speak by the Holy Spirit. Now, brothers, my sisters, brothers will betray brothers. Brothers will hand over brothers and they'll be placed to death. Fathers is children and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, says the Lord, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not to be, let the reader understand. My sisters, my brothers, look around us. Search every continent, every island, every village, and what do we see? Everything points to the glorious coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us not be afraid. There is no, this is no time to be timid. 
It is a time to be bold. Let us loudly proclaim to the world, to every nation, to every tribe. Tell it from the housetop, in the fields, on the streets, every corner and everyone that we meet. Let us talk the love of Christ. Let us let them know of his second coming. For these are the signs of the times. And in this we have no doubt that Jesus is truly coming again. Do not be dismayed, for the chapter is nearing to a close. These are the days of probation, given unto us, so that we might repent and find comfort in the Lord. So, when, <clears throat> so that when the books are open and the rules are called up yonder, we will be there to meet the Lord in the clouds. Beloved, do you want to be there? Do you really want to be there? Do you believe in God's glorious promise? If you believe, stand with me. Let us pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, our God and our Creator, we thank you for your love, O God. We thank you for being such a loving God, such a caring God, that you have prepared us for the things we are now witnessing, O God. You have prepared us so that we would know the time of your coming, O God. Father God, help us to be strong. Help us to be faithful. You have sent us the Holy Spirit to be your guide. You have sent us the Holy Spirit to lead us and to keep us strong through all these days of tribulations, O God. So may the Holy Spirit continue to lead us and guide us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise be.